Hello and welcome to this episode of How to Be a Great GM. In today's episode, we're looking at how to keep your players engaged. Now, this is a particularly tricky situation to find yourselves in if your players aren't engaged. So how do we do it? How do we keep players engaged? Well, these are my solutions on how to keep players engaged, how to keep them focused on your game, even if things don't seem to be working out for them. Now, engagement, of course, means that the players are listening, they're attentive, but, of course, if it's not their character's turn, if their character's not in their space, and so their character literally is on pause, then, well, they might not be as engaged. So you want to learn first to understand whether engagement is during the period when the player and their character is active, or whether it's not active and it doesn't warrant the player to be active either. Now, if you can identify these two spaces, then you're in a good space to start. So when a player is not engaged and it's not their character's uh, space for a good few minutes. So I'm not talking about during combat where it's somebody else's turn. I'm literally talking about maybe when the parties split and one character is off doing something while the others are doing something else and you're dealing with the others. That one player and his character who's not involved may then be forgiven for checking messages on their phone, going off to sort out drinks and that kind of thing. That's all good and well and it's not showing lack of engagement. What should be worrying is if that player doesn't immediately return to the table, but dillies and dallies and says, no, 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 you carry on with them, you do their thing. Now again, this might not indicate non-engagement, it might mean that the player is still trying to figure out what they're going to get their character to do, and they're nervous to come back to the table. But it could be a sign that they're not engaged. Players whose characters are currently involved in a scene and they are distracted on their phones or they're getting up for drinks or etc. etc. Those are the players that you really need to worry about because it means that they're no longer engaged. So let's look at this idea of engagement. And there's a very simple way, in my opinion, on how you make sure that you are doing everything in your power to engage the player. Now, bearing in mind, the player may have a whole lot of real world issues that they're dealing with. And so it doesn't matter whether you're throwing Game of Thrones style narratives and special effects, and you've got music going, and you've got everything, and you've done everything right, and they're still not engaged. So also bear that in mind. Sometimes real life just causes players to lose focus. However, we need to make sure that we have mitigated as many of the situations that could be as a result of our GMing to get into that happy place where it's no longer our fault, but that of the real world. So the first thing for me when we're talking about keeping a player engaged is to look at the story. Who is the center of the story? Now, if the players are not the center of the story, or at least their characters, why should the players be involved? Would the player of, let's say, Darth Vader really care if the story had nothing to do with Darth Vader and was instead all about, say, the Ewoks on Endor? Would he really care too much? No, he wouldn't. Would the player care if he was playing an NPC who was just a blacksmith and when the PCs walked into the town, he got a few moments to have some interesting dialogue with them and then they walked off and the adventure happened over there and he kind of got left to carry on hammering away at that old piece of iron. The player wouldn't be interested. Unless, of course, the player is really trying to do something. But the point is, is as the GM, you are the one who controls where the focus of the story lies. And although your master plot is focused around perhaps the villain having something to do and trying to get there and having difficulty getting it, the player's character should be the center of the story. Now, in traditional literature and traditional script writing and movies and that kind of thing, the definition of the lead character, the, the hero, the central character of the story, is the individual who is making all of the decisions. Whether they're right or wrong, it is still the character who's making all of the decisions. Now, that is literally the decision to go down the corridor, to open the door, to advance forward, to retreat, to move around. 
if the PCs, if the players' PCs are not the ones who are making those decisions, but they are simply being driven along by NPCs who are making those decisions, by definition, the NPCs now are the actual heroes of the story, and the PCs have just become tools for those NPCs to express their own story. This means the PCs have no real value, no real contribution to the story, and they're literally there uh, to go along with the ride. This is a bad space. So you've got to sit back and reflect and go, well, who's making the decisions? Is it the PCs players, or is it me as the GM making decisions and giving them orders and letting them go off and do their own, uh, follow those orders that they've been given? Am I putting them in situations where they are given choices to make? That's very important. Are they able to make decisions or are you just steamrolling them through your narrative? In which case, they're still not making decisions. And if no one else is making decisions either, you're just telling a story that the players really are there to maybe add in some dialogue every now and again. Again, that's not very engaging. So the critical thing is to look very first and foremost, who is making the decisions? Is it the players or is it you, the GM? If it's you, the GM, you need to shift it around very quickly to make sure that the players are making the right decisions. But now the players are making the wrong decisions. They're not going down that path. They're not following that story. They're not going in this direction. Again, that is not your concern. Your concern is to tell your story in the context of the player character's journey. Now, that's the second critical thing. Your narrative, although it's playing out and you've got your master plot busy soldiering on in its own direction, your narrative can only be told through the story of the PCs. If the PCs aren't there, or if the PCs have gone in a different direction, you as the GM need to find a way of expressing your story through the new direction that they've gone in. That might mean suspending your story briefly until you can introduce an NPC who hints at what's going on in the background, or you can introduce a minor adventure which leads them back towards the main story that's happening, or you let them hear about it as they're passing through town. It doesn't matter. The point is, is that your story should only be expressed through the PC's discovery and interaction with the world, not foist upon them, because otherwise then they're not engaged, they're just being told a story. So that's, that's very important, is that your story moves around the players. Now, I know that there are a lot of you out there who go, oh, but I've got a world, and the world carries on, regardless of whether the players do X or Y or Z then why do you have players? Just kick them out. They're only going to muck it up anyway. So if your primary story is so sacrosanct that you can't tell it from a different perspective, then you don't need any players to bring in a different perspective. That's the hard and cold reality of it. Your story, yes, it might carry on, but it should only be discovered and heard about and thought about when the PCs engage with it. This brings me to my next point. The engagement factor is ramped up when the story, when the adventures are about the PCs and not about the story. Now, this seems to be contrary to everything that I've been talking about on this channel in terms of your main plot and how to link your subplots into your main plot and how to bring everything around and make sure it all fits around the story you're trying to tell. The story you're trying to tell has to be the story of the PCs and how they interact with your major story, not around the story when the PCs happen to be in it. So this means when you're looking at how you've set up this particular adventure, how is this adventure unfolding? If the PCs are not at the center, if they're on the edge and they're running around, they're not going to be engaged. So if the PCs are driving the adventure, they're engaged. If the adventure is driving the PCs, you are effectively trying to herd cats and they will lose interest. 
You've got to make it about the players' characters. Now, there are a whole bunch of videos on how to link your players' backstories into your side quests and your main quests and all that kind of thing. The critical thing here is that your players have to be making decisions which is driving them forward and as a result, revealing bits of the story as they move along. Now, if they go in the complete opposite direction to your main story, your main story must change direction to match where they're going. So if the forces of evil are mustering in the north, but the players want to go south, what are the ramifications of the northern amassment in the south? Are there any ramifications whatsoever? Are there portents of some dark evil brewing? Are there traders coming from the north who've been robbed of all of their wares? You need to use your creativity to bring that story to the PCs. But the PCs are the ones who are going to discover it through dialogue with NPCs, through exploring of runes and uh, ancient places, interactions and such like and so on. So you need to make sure that the story is still centered around them at all times, even though the background stuff is happening. Now, another thing is, is that your plan, therefore, needs to evolve. As your players make decisions, as their characters go in different directions, your plans need to be malleable and they need to change. This means you need to be adding to it so that by the time you get to your final grand scene that you've been plotting for months, by the time you get there, the PCs have invested so much in journeying and exploring and fighting and combating and seeking out and looking. The players have invested so much time in getting through all of that stuff and they've got all these hints and things that are weaving around in the background, but it's always been given to them only when their PCs have gone and been part of that story. Only once the PCs have decided to engage in that story can you then give it to them. Thrusting a giant battle upon the PCs is not interesting. Having the PCs cause a giant battle, having the PCs stumble across a giant battle and their objective is in the middle of it and runs the risk of being destroyed because of the battle, that's far more interesting, far more engaging than just, oh, a random battle happens or there is a battle happening in the, in the West and you're not there, but it's happening. The king orders you to go there. If they have no vested interest in going there, why should they be engaged? On the other hand, if the prize that will give them money to buy that castle that they've been after is buried in a ruin, which happens to be the battlefield that these two armies are meeting in, well, that's much more interesting. They have to go in there because they wanted to go in there in the first place. So if you can get your story around what the PCs want to do, based on what the players want to do, rather than on what you want the PCs to do, you will have engagement. You really, really will. Now, another thing is, is engagement is also about success versus failure. Your PCs and players by default cannot just succeed at everything. You have to give them failures to punctuate their successes. Now, I'm not advocating here that you have to cause them to fail 1.3 times every time they succeed. What I'm saying is, is that you need to allow them to fail, but at the same time ensure that they understand that that failure is a setback, not a dead end. Dead ends are not engaging. If your players get to the point where they have no idea what they should be doing because everything that they have tried has failed, they're no longer engaged. They're defeated. Well, we tried this, we tried that, we tried the next thing. Nothing worked. Why should we bother carrying on? Says the player. The PC doesn't have a choice in the matter. So you need to balance success with failure you need to make sure that every PC choice doesn't ultimately lead to success either, because otherwise the PCs are just walking all over your story and there's no challenge for the PCs. And that is a problem that happens when the PCs become too powerful and then nothing poses a problem. Why should they be engaged if they are these gods that walk amongst men and have no kind of risk to self because they always succeed? So it's a balance of success versus failure, but it's always based on their decisions that they have taken that have driven them to that course. 
As a game master, your objective then is to make sure that when they hit those dead ends is that you've got NPCs lined up who can go in there and act as guides, act as supports, and act as mentors, and lead them in a different direction. Propose alternatives. Always propose. Never give. Never order. Unless, of course, it's a king or it's someone who has rank and who can order them. But then those should be used sparingly and the way in which those orders are followed should be up to the players to decide and to enact. They have to make the decision. Don't make it for them. Otherwise, they won't be engaged. So those are my thoughts on how you keep players engaged. Make it their story. And if it's not their story, then they're not going to be engaged. It's as simple as that, he said 13, 15 minutes into the video. I hope it's been useful. If you want to chat more, join us um, on uh, Facebook, join us on um, the uh, website, www.greatgamemaster.com, and uh, we can discuss, debate, and explore further. And of course, you can hit those comments you can hit the like button, you can hit the subscribe button to see more videos along those lines. And until next time, I wish you and yours the happiest of gaming.